I had asked originally, can I not follow Jim? <laughs> I thank you, Jim, for the, the, the intro and the personal story. Uh, maybe for me, um, I'm going to say somewhat similar to Jim. I'm quite passionate, and, and my staff can speak about that in terms of passion and energy. My background is in health and physical education and in coaching and in inspiring. And then when I taught, that's what I believe that's what it's about. It's about inspiring the classroom and the learning. And now my classroom and learner is really, um, and although I don't see them as students, it's sharing the knowledge and the inspiration about what I, as a principal, learn you know, from our board and sort of some of the things. But I want to say the key thing, with, even though Jim's sitting here, I know that as a teacher, you never like to feel like things are top down. And you never want to feel like, oh, they're telling us to do this. Well, I will share with you, because we are the first school uh, in the TSP to go all of the subject areas. this. So not just one, not just two. We went from zero to 100. And somebody will ask me, how did you get it? And I, this is my second year out of Starting my second year. Second year as a principal. How did you do that? Right? And I will say, um, my answer to that, because I've been thinking about it, my answer to that is, I think you have to be really a good listener. Um, you know, I, I call it. You know, as a teacher, you want to have, you want to, you want to teach curriculum that's responsive and relevant. While as a leader, you want to be responsive. Or you want to be relevant and responsive. Relevant, relevant, hearing what the needs are of the system. Responsive after I speak, because I am the voice to my staff. I'm responsive to hear what really they feel from the ground level. And they can speak afterwards whether that is actually happening or not. I like to think it is true because we are doing it, but I think that's the step. That you have to genuinely want to listen as the teacher, listening to what's going on, that the principal says, what are we, why don't we try this? And then as the principal that makes it happen, what can be done? And I think that's when the wonderful things happen. And I'm going to share, my staff is wonderful. That's the first thing about the staff. So you can see that it's a collaborative whole school approach to what we're doing. 100% collaborative, whole school. We got buy-in from the school and school community. Yeah. It is not de streaming because we know what the thoughts are of de streaming as, as Jim said. <laughs> and the staff that said it. They created part of this power, not me. They created it and presented the staff. So I'm going to try and, I know I, I have time, but I am, am mindful of because Jim is so wonderful and he's you know, presenting the, the system perspective. But for us, we had said we didn't want this to go beyond grade nine. Because what we saw was in grade 9, the foundational skills in grade 9 are so important that if we help them understand the skills and habits to be successful, what maybe they were missing for whatever the reason is. Because it's not our job to figure out that. We can't figure out that right now as secondary, but we can deal with what we have. And so if that's the case, we want to teach them the skills and habits that we feel are here to help them. And then we think each pathway is important. The ministry feels, and, and going to college is important. But you can get to through academic first, and then later on you can figure it out what's the best path. So that's what we thought for us. Um, not about lowering academic standards, obviously. We want to implement a program that promotes a community of excellence. It is about excellence. It is about have, having everybody see that this is. It's like sport. You want to be the best. Let's try and help our team be the best. Even though we may think we're a tier two school at the beginning, we're going to be the best. We're going to help you be the best. Anthony? The learning environment at Oakwood was not what we wanted. We recognize that as stuff. When I came in, first thing you do as a new principal, you go to your leaders, you find out what's our strengths, what do we want to improve, what is it that I can help with. Almost every one of them, ACL of English, phys ed, science, Canadian World Studies, everybody said, no. We're not quite happy with the level of excellence, expectations in the building for our students and outcomes. Some of our students are not doing, or we're not serving, we're not doing that well. With. Okay, great, what do we want to do? I'm here, I want to help, what is it that we can do? We want to raise the level of excellence. We want this, we want to try and do this. While hearing from the board in the back on what Jim is saying, I figured, how about this? How does that work perfect? Wait a second. Why not this? That was a question that, why not? Yeah, we could do this if we have the right things, which is not what we did in the past. We need to have the will and we need to have the skill. So we need help, but we need to have class sizes. Capital is the number one thing that they all said. 
we can't have 30 kids in the class to be able to teach mixed ability arts. And that we already had mixed abilities in, in the classes that were the academic classes. They felt that. The teachers felt that. That they were already doing it. But that in, in the applied level learners, we had a group of students that sometimes it felt like a staff. That was, from, I don't want to teach them. It, the department that don't give me that class. Because of the behaviors that, as teachers, we all want students to learn and achieve, and, and that we don't feel good when it doesn't happen, when you end up with a, a class list and you gotta go to the principal and say, uh, three quarters of the class failed. What? Nobody feels good. So let's fix this, let's try and address this. And so steps taken, quickly. Um, discussions and dialogue with the open curriculum leaders. That was key. Just to, what is it that we need to do? Let's get everybody involved with what is it. So then I engage with dialogue with the superintendent and trustee as to like, this is what we're thinking. I know we're, we want to do this. I know Jeffries and Westview are doing aspects. We're actually thinking all of them. And somebody may ask, why all of them? We thought that when you have one subject, the students are in apply. They're locked into that one. They have to. Then if we want, and we recognize as teachers, sometimes the behaviors, it just these three kids together, it doesn't work. Let's try to move one of them and create a different environment for them. It's hard to do that if you're stuck. Oh, well, they have to take this English class, so I can't move them to the other. Well, if you do them all, guess what? It's so much easier. Permutations, combinations, to move them. Let's talk together. Let's collaborate. Let's have meetings. This kid is great with this teacher, this learning. Let's learn from them. This kid's not good with this other kid. Just put everything. They're constantly poking each other. Let's, we can't, let's, let's. We, let's regroup and let's see how we can move them around. It gives us the flexibility. That's essentially why we thought, let's go over. Why not? Let's, let's look at why. And so we did that. Um, we engaged in dialogue and learning with other schools who have started similar, as we had said. So we're not going to just go in. No, we wanted to know what was happening in our schools. And then we, uh, and, and, and we also obviously had a lot of central staff come in and talk to us about things, particularly myself. And then I, once I got the trust with my staff, we brought people in to say, let's hear them. We proposed a plan to our full school staff. They presented, not me. As the friends, I did not come in and say, We're, how about we try this? They said, let's try this. I was a new person. I came in and said, who's he talking about? What's he talking about? <laughs> he doesn't know anything about well, our school. I had the leaders that were in the school that did the work, that had relationships, that cared with me. They presented. And so then we presented to the school council. <laughs> They say, this is what we would like to do. What do you think? It was a wonderful moment because at the end, the school council applauded. We're like, hey, okay, let's go. This is like amazing. So then we went to and had dialogue with the student, the student representatives. This is kind of the thing. This is what we're doing. What do you think? Right? Engaging their work and their, their understanding of how school should be. And then we. Um, we visited other schools and colleges. We went to visit Runnymede that was doing English work that was amazing. That essentially, we took a lot of the ideas there. And Phil can speak a bit about that was key. And English is key, because English is the one that determines whether you go to university or not. Right? If, you know, if we look at English, that's the key. Because you can do apply, apply with other subjects, English in grade 9, apply, apply, other subjects in grade 10, with, but English, academic, grade 11, you can take university English and then mixed classes because it applies, get you in the mix, which university accepts. And then grade 12, same thing. You can do all M's with 4U and you can get to university if that's the rule. And so, uh, sorry, go back. Yep. Come back, Anthony, thank you. And then just a couple of quick other things. Visit elementary theater schools because they are the ones, um, they're the ones that are teaching our wonderful kids to get to second. So let's talk to them. We visited our guidance counselors, the elementary guidance, to tell them what this is about. Because we didn't want them to think, oh, we're this Oakwood where we only want, we only want academic kids. No, that's not what this was about. This was about something else. And so we wanted to make sure they understood. They, when we brought them into our school, the EICs, at the end of what we said, they clapped and they said, thank you. Because it makes our jobs easier. Because we struggled. Oh, shit, this kid go to apply to academic, but this kid had this teacher that was an LTO this year. Do they really know what his learning style is or what he can become? But they say he's got to be in the plot. And so they struggle. It makes their job easier. It's like, oh, you just academic. And so we attended professional learning. 
release time for our teachers together to kind of talk. So this is how it all set up. Next. Um, it is a program to elevate the learning for all students. That is what we say. That is what we believe. That is who we are. That's what we said we were going to do as a school. We. It wasn't about de-screening. It was about elevating the learning environment for all. Plan developed by Open. They are so proud of the fact that, and I continue to say this to my senior staff, it is a plan developed by Open. We wanted this. This was our plan, right? And of course, it has elements of what they above wants, but they wanted it. Being responsive to the core, the ground people that really are doing it. Uh, program is focused on high expectations. It is about high expectations. And the, the key thing there is, and most importantly that I had shared and I believe they are doing, is a belief. If you believe in kids, if you get them to believe in themselves, then they can. And that also I ask our, our staff to look at the kids differently, because then you have that power to instill belief. And so this year, and they can speak to it, I said to my school, as the principal, at the assembly, this year, to so all the grades, I want you to think about, I said to the students, the three Bs. And I do this sign, because kid, kids love signs these days, so I said B3. And B3 is believe. Believe that you can. Because I know I have these grade eights coming and that are maybe should have been an applied according to it. Believe you can. Bust your butt, <laughs> which is work hard. Because we all believe, every single one of us as educators, we know we need kids to work hard. Nothing comes without hard work. Bust your butt and be the best you can. Those are the B3s. So when I walk through the hallways, I make the sign and I ask kids, what does that mean? And they tell me. But part of that also is, and they know this, is me telling them as the leader. Believe, bust your butt, be the best you can. And I say this because they know that that's what I, and they're amazing. Um, placing students in the oh, academic. Oh, sorry, yeah, I, I'm going to go back. I'm gonna... oh. No worries. I think I'm good there. Thank you. Uh, next one. This is enhanced program choice. Enhanced program's choice. Doing something different. I am so proud of them for doing something different. When I came to Oakwood, I created sort of a new saying every day that they would hear. Think outside the box. Think different. Be the best you can. Think other. Think OCI. Every morning they hear a message that is something to that effect. Think other, think OC. Think other means think different. Think um, the other person beside you. Citizenship. There's just messages there. And so I'm so proud of our staff for doing this. And that it really helps keep the options open for all of our students. That's what it's about. Provides an opportunity for all students to have an enhanced academic experience taught by us secondary teachers before they decide on what they do in grade 10. So if you think of that, we get to teach our grade nines, build the foundational skills that we think are so important that, so that they can be successful. Next. Class cap size of 25. So I needed help in staffing. Jim and the board needed help to make sure that I, because class caps are 30, 33. Right? How do you do that with that big? They would kill me if I were not to be able to get 25. They said, you're killing me, Steve. We can't do this work without getting 25. So we were able to get 25 as a class cap. We did that. We got some additional 0.5 support from the senior um, so that I can do that. But that's because at the end they said, you know, what else do you need? I proposed it. There's a set of priorities that the uh, staffing department has as to what the needs are. Programming, equity, enhanced pathways is one of them. So they said, okay, we'll give you an extra 0.5, which we are glad and, and, and extremely happy for. I do have two classes in my school. One is 26 and one is 27. I have four sections each of academic classes in grade 9. Unfortunately, I have one that's 26 and 27. I couldn't do anything about it. Right? But we have additional supports for that. And I said to the parents, I mean, I'm going to try. That's what we could do. And then, it was purposeful teaching of academic skills and habits and behaviors with a focus on the skills of competencies of the 21st century. That's what our program is about. Next. 